Are you thinking about buying a house in 2023? I'm going to give you five tips of things that you should be doing or thinking about so that way you can get ready and become a homeowner in 2023. And for those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Sean Uihara. I'm a branch manager with Geneva Financial. And if you've been watching me for a little bit, I've moved to a new office here at Geneva and I've got a new email address as well. So if you have any questions, make sure you send all your questions and inquiries to the new email address and my team and I would be happy to answer them and help you with all your home loan needs across the country. If you need more information, you can hit the description below. There's links to more info as well. But today we wanna to talk about buying and what should you be doing before you get into a contract on a house? Now, most of you already know what number one's going to be, and that's gonna be get pre-approved. We cannot harp on this anymore because getting pre-approved is literally the foundation to buying a house. However, if you have enough money to pay cash for the house, then you can skip number one and you can watch the rest of this video um, in order to help you with your purchase. But first and foremost, get pre-approved. This is where your lender is going to take a look at your credit. They're gonna look at your income, your debt, how much money you have to be able to put towards your down payment, and several other factors will help the loan officer determine what your buying power is. So when a loan officer is doing their analysis, they are looking at your specific scenario and they're comparing the guidelines from Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac, and also from FHA, or maybe even VA if you're a veteran to determine what's the maximum amount that you can purchase. So if a lender comes back to you and says, hey, Joe, you can qualify for X amount of dollars, that's purely based on the guidelines that they see. Now, some companies have what they call overlays. What that basically means is that that bank that they work for is putting additional overlays or restrictions upon the initial guidelines that are set forth by Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, and, and the agencies that are out there. So sometimes if it doesn't quite make sense with what that lender's telling you, that's when you may be encouraged to shop around, see if you can find a direct lender where they don't have a lot of those overlays. So when you're shopping around for a lender, you should always be shopping for strategy and option like I always talk about here. Not necessarily interest rate because every lender out there can give you a lower rate. They're just gonna charge you more money for it. So it doesn't take any brain power to give you a lower rate. You really want the best strategy to get you into the deal with the least amount of headaches. So the initial part of getting pre-approved is probably where you will have all the anxiety, the fear, the doubt. Should I buy a house? Should I not? All of that stuff's gonna come up in the beginning. However, in my opinion, once you go through the pre-approval process, that should answer 80 to 90% of all your questions. Now you can focus on finding your house. That's the fun part of the entire process. So really, if you can get the pre-approval out of the way, you're doing all the heavy lifting, you're doing all the stuff that you don't want to do. Pull your credit, go find your tax returns, go find your pay stubs. All of that stuff can be annoying. And trust me, even when I buy my investment properties, I have to go through my bank statements, send it to the lender, go dig up my tax returns in Dropbox, and wherever the heck else I keep all my stuff and send it over. But once you do that, the rest of the process is so easy because you're just updating your pay stubs, you're updating a bank statement, you're signing some documents. It's nothing that's that painful. So get that out of your head that buying a house is difficult because it's just a pre-approval. Once you knock that out, you are literally setting yourself up for success. Now, the second thing you should be doing before house hunting is figuring out your needs and wants. So what part of town do you want to live in? Are you needing to move because your kids need to be in a certain school district? Maybe you need to move closer to work. Maybe you have family that are relocating. Maybe your in-laws or your parents need to move in with you and you need a bigger house, but they need to be closer to a certain hospital. All of these things, you wanna have a really good checklist as to what you need. Because without that, you're going to make your realtor's job extremely difficult. With thousands of homes on the market, it's hard for them to then reduce that number to a search that's gonna be manageable for you to be able to look at home. So what most real estate agents will do with this needs and wants list is go into their computer and they're gonna go into the MLS, which is the multiple listing service. They're gonna just input all the data that you give them. Square footage, what part of town you wanna to be in. Is it a two-story house? Is it a single story? Or maybe you're open to a tri-level or a split level. How big the lot needs to be? How many garages do you need? 
Do you need to have a pool or not a pool? Or maybe you want to be in a guard gated community. All of these things will help them then reduce the number of homes and hopefully get you into a search that fits what you're looking for. But here's one piece of advice that I will give you during this search process. As you're doing this with your agent, you have to communicate with them and you have to let them know what you like and what you don't like. They're not a mind reader. And I've seen this happen countless times in my career where the agent will set them up on a search, the buyer starts looking at homes, but then they don't tell the realtor that, you know what, I don't wanna be in this part of town anymore, I wanna move on the west side. So then they expect the realtor to know that. Now with their search, they're not getting any homes on the west side. So what do they do? You call another real estate agent. Hey, Kirsten, I want you to start sending me homes on the west side. I'm approved with Sean at Geneva Financial for 400,000, blah, blah, blah. And they set you up on the search. They find your house, you close on the deal. The problem is you never told that to the first realtor. It's like a relationship. You have to communicate with them based on what you like and what you don't like. Because when you tell them, hey, I don't like this anymore, guess what they're gonna do? Go back into your search. They're gonna remove that from the criteria and they're gonna adjust it going forward. So there has to be some feedback that you have to give them. If not, they can't do their job effectively. Number three, you wanna determine what neighborhood you're going to be in. You could almost lump this into your needs and wants, but if you're relocating here to Vegas or relocating to any part of the country, you probably wanna make a trip to the city first. That way you can drive around without any pressure from a real estate agent and you can get an idea of what the city looks like. Drive around during traffic hours, whether it be the morning rush hour or maybe at five o'clock at the end of the day. Get an idea of what the traffic is like from certain parts of town, because those are gonna be some of the things that I feel like when you drive the area, you will literally feel that this is a good neighborhood, this is a bad neighborhood, and I think you will simply know in your gut what's going to make you happy. This is why I think it's good to do this on your own without a realtor in the car or anybody else there with you. That way, if you're by yourself or maybe with your husband or wife, you folks can have an honest conversation to say, yes, this feels good. We like this area. So make sure you do your homework, do some due diligence. That way, again, you're making your needs and wants list more defined with the areas that you're going to be happy with. And number four, you wanna find a good real estate agent. Now there's a lot of ways you can find a good realtor, whether it be on social media, whether it be on YouTube, or you can go online and you can look for reviews. Now another place that you can actually find a good real estate agent is from your lender. If you've got pre-approved with someone, any good loan officer is going to work with great real estate agents. So you can always ask your lender for recommendations because let me say this, every good loan officer has really good realtors they work with. If not, we would not be in business. And we know who's doing deals out there because the thing with real estate agents, so many of them work part-time, so many of them do not do this business for a full-time living. As a lender, this is all I've ever done for the last 15 years. My team and I, we're working 60 plus hours a week in order to do what we do every day. I know some real estate agents out there that do not work more than probably 10 hours a week. Now, you want someone who's up to date with the market, you want someone who knows how to negotiate, and you want someone that does deals actively. This is the most important purchase that you will be making. Do you wanna work with someone who closed one deal last year, or do you wanna work with someone who's closing deals every single week? But let's just say they're not doing a ton of business. That's okay. Maybe they're on a team and the team does a lot of business because you want the support. You want the expertise, you want the knowledge so that way you are not buying a house that turns out to be a huge headache and a problem down the road. And now at that point, you don't know who to call. You sure as hell are not calling the realtor that sold you the house because they weren't worth anything. And it's gonna be a huge problem. And especially if you're relocating from somewhere else, you wanna work with someone who is reputable and does deals. And number five, you wanna to continue to save up money and work on your credit. Those are two of the most important things that you can continue to do prior to you buying your house. So continue to pay down your credit cards, keep your balances under 30% of your limit. So if you have a credit card limit of $1,000, Make sure to keep that balance under 30%, which is $300 or less. Now, the best way to go about this is to understand when your statement closing date is and when your payment due date is. These are two dates that are on your credit card statement that you need to familiarize yourself with. And the reason why 
is because the balance that gets reported on your statement closing date is the amount that gets reported to the credit bureaus. So if you wanna get your balance on your card down, pay it before that closing date happens, not on the payment date. The payment date is the date that you need to pay so that way you are not incurring additional interest charges before they report you 30 days late to the creditors. So get your balances down and keep them low. Now, also work on saving up your money because every dollar is going to make a difference. The market that we're in right now, yes, the sellers are willing to pay for your closing costs. The sellers are willing to cover your interest rate buy down. They're willing to lower the sales price. However, if interest rates were to drop further, let's just say overnight, like we saw them go the other way last year, everybody's gonna come off the sidelines and they're gonna wanna start buying because there's so much pent up demand, which then the market's going to shift and we're going to start seeing multiple offer situations again. So if that happens, if you decide to wait that long, you better have an extra 10, $20,000 saved up or else you trying to get into the game without any money is going to be extremely tough. So your window of opportunity is now that the sellers are willing to talk and willing to negotiate. So in my opinion, take advantage of it. But if you're not ready to buy it, that's okay. Follow these five steps. And I would say at least three to four months before your lease is up or before you wanna get into your new house, get with a loan officer, get pre-approved. So now you know what it takes to buy a house. And if you don't know where to start, I've got my handy dandy home buyer guide below and you can always Reach out to me with your questions and my team and I can get you qualified to get you into your house this year. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.